Guys, welcome to our Wednesday night shiur. Our shiur is sponsored by the Hassano family. Rabbi Meir. May Rabbi Avraham over here see a lot of nachat from him. May be a tzaddik, a chacham, kadosh, tahor. And do uh, Hashem, you know. May it, may it be, may he be followed by another one. Amen. <laughs> you didn't say amen. <laughs> amen. Our, our, uh, we are we at Kiryat Lishem. I want to tell you guys before, just before we start a shiur, guys, don't forget to subscribe. You have friends that you think they could use this? Subscribe. Our channel is Lishem Torah and Inspiration. We are on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Instagram or on Instagram, we just listen. L E S A. Org, org, e, uh, organization. E, uh, o R G. Nikuda. Dot. Leshem. L E S H E M. Okay? Thank you. I like to listen to myself. Please subscribe. Please tell your friends to subscribe. This is your Olam Haba, guys. The Gemara says there was a big machloke between Rabbi Chia and Rabbi Hanina, the students of Rabbi, Rabbi Yuda and Asi. He was known as Rebbe. <laughs> and they, he, each one said to one another, I'm better than you. I don't say this story to my students. Once I said the story, like, oh, they were Bale Gava. People who haven't been into the Torah yet, they don't understand what it means when two rabbis had an argument. The Rebbe Hanina said, I'm greater than you. Why? To give her about Metzia, pay bet, pay dalit, mashukazeh. If the Torah would be forgotten from Israel, I'm so smart. I could bring it all back. Just from the five books of Moses. That's crazy. Rabbi Chia said, I'm better than you. Why? I make sure that it wouldn't be forgotten. <laughs> so the rabbi heard which one was better? Rabbi Chia. Not Rabbi Hanina. Why? Gidolim Ma'asechia. Great are the works of Rabbi Chia. Alright? It's better that it shouldn't be forgotten and to bring it back no one is forgotten. So... Everyone over here, when you share, when you like, when you send, when you tell a friend, you guys enjoy a lecture and you send it out, an intellectual lecture. You're doing the Ma'asei Rabbi Chia. That's what you're doing, Mamash. Pshuto Kamash Ma'o. And Chia is Gematria Koach. Koach is what? Strength. strength. It's your strength and Olam Haba. Okay, so please, subscribe, share. This is your Olam Haba and... You know what? You're doing me a chesed because this is, you're, you're multiplying my olam haba. Okay? And I'll tell you the truth, guys. You don't know. I know because I get the phone calls that how many people enjoy from this. Okay? So please. Now, I also want to say that our shiur, as usual, our, uh, our tzaddik over here who always comes, records it. Gabriel Chai ben Ruben Vele'ah. May Hashem bless him that this year, Hashana, Bishud Kola Mitzvot, Kola Masim Tovim, all the good deeds, all the mitzvot, and may he find his Batzog and me Bekim, Bait Neman Israel. With that said, let's go into the parasha. I have a beautiful message for you. I once said at a Brit Yitzhak, I'm going to speak for five minutes, it ended up about 20 minutes. Tonight, I want to tell you guys a, a very beautiful message. It has to do with chinuch yeladim, raising kids. Now everyone here is parents, mostly everyone here is parents, and all you guys over here have a lot of experience and a lot of, uh, you, a lot of knowledge. I remember when I was in college, lo aleinu lo al Israel, and um, I was in a class. And the professor was teaching adolescent psychology. And the Goyim thing that they made a chokhmah, a wisdom out of it. Like, you know, th there is a rule, and you gotta follow the rule. If you don't follow it, you're not a real parent. I remember I heard stories that, that parents that were strict with their kids, and by mistake, their kids went to the teacher, you know, kids are uh, tmimim. Mm -hmm. You could use and abuse. You, they don't know what they're saying. Like, you know, Abba screamed, Mommy yelled. And the teacher thinks, oh, I have to report this. They tell the principal, no, no. principal calls ACS. the ACS, yeah. Child yeah. Child and 
I heard a case. The kids, the parents were separated from their kids. And there was a case that I heard not long ago that a, that a, that a parent, that a kid fell on his head. Kids don't fall, they fall all the time. And the child, by mistake, you know, and by mistake, the, the child says whatever he says, said it, and the, the parent reported it, the, I'm sorry, the teacher reported it, and the, the parent, was the mother, was separated from her, she was a single mother. She was separated from her child. So, this is an idea, a concept known in Judaism, you're only supposed to have mercy on people that have that, that have a head on their shoulders. A person who doesn't have that, you can't have mercy on them. And a child doesn't know what he's saying. Yes, it's true. Children do have one pro over adults. Why? They choose to be happy over being sad, over being right. Adults choose being right over being happy. If an adult has a problem with another adult, he could be bijangi, as they say in Bukhari. They could be in a fight with that person for 20 years. For no for, but I'm right. But a child, he'll get a patch from his parents. A patch. Next second, the child is going to hug his parent. Why? I want to be happy. This makes me happy. My relationship with my parent makes me happy. In, his, in that child's mind. But yet, as adults, we have to know that Hashem gave us that. And the Gemara says, a person who doesn't have that, the Beit HaMikdash cannot be built in his day. Cannot be built in his day. Lo aleinu. I hope yesterday was Asara Tevet, the tent of Tevet. The Khatam Sofer says, on the tent of Tevet, God decides whether he will rebuild the Beit HaMikdash this year. It's the Khatam Sofer. That means yesterday we had the chance to change history. If a person passes away and the Beit HaMikdash wasn't built in his day, it was as if it was destroyed in his days. What is the Beit HaMikdash, what is our Jewish future dependent on is in this week's parasha. I had the opportunity, a very good opportunity to make my wife happy, to make my kids happy. There is a Shabbaton, a grand Shabbaton this week. My wife wanted to go, my kids were excited. I said, I'm not going. Usually I would say, yes, I'm going. And I had a chance to go there for a very, very cheap price. He said, why? I said, why don't you want to go? I said, this week is Parashat Vayechi. Parashat Vayechi is when Yaakov Avinu says, Isfu Banai, gather my sons. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to you at the end of days. And then he goes on to bless every single son with a specific blessing. I said, this week, I'm not missing in my Kehilat Lashem. This is Vayechi. What's Vayechi? And he will live. I have to make the best out of this opportunity. I have to be by Yishuv You know what Yishuv Adat is? I have to be in my right dot, in my right mind. I can't go into some other place. You know, Lahavdil, to separate, a million separations. We have two basketball teams. Which one is more likely to win? Home court advantage. If you're not in the home court advantage, your mind, there's no issue for that, you know? I said, I need to be in my own four corners. I need to see my books and myself. I have to be connected to my thing. You know, I need to have my issue for that. It's chazak, chazak, we need chazak this week. It's the end of a, it's the end of a book. Sefer Bereshit is called Sefer Hayisharim, the book of the straight men. The, you know what straight means? Kill me, put a bullet in me, bur do anything you want to me, I'm straight. I have principles and I'm not going to break it. And this is the concept that in this week's parasha, Vayechi, we deal with the most profound intellectual opinion, the most profound idea how to raise kids. A message to parents. This week's parasha is a message to parents. Yaakov Avinu is about to pass away. He was the first man to pray for people to be sick before he died. Before they die. Abraham prayed for people to look old. It used to be a person used to reach the age of 30. 
he would stay at this at this state, age of thirty. He would when it came for him for his time to die, he would do hop chi and his shama was come out. Avraham Avinu said, wait a second. If a person does that, he can't get ready for death. First, let him become old. Avraham Avinu became old. He was the first one to have a white beard. Yitzchak, he was olat mima, he was blind. He was chashuv kemit. He, he was considered like a dead person. Gemara says, three people are considered like dead. Like they're dead, chas v'shalom. Poor, no kids, and blind. Yitzhak was, consi- was blind. It was Hashuf Kemet Hashushano. Yaakov, he prayed that a person before he passes away should be sick. Why? He should have time to prepare a will. If you become old, okay, you might have 10, 15, 20 years. You know, I'm, I'm already graying over here. And then I have to prepare for my thing. You know? Yaakov, I mean, you pray that a person should get sick before he passes away. And he did. He became sick. And he calls all of his sons, all 12 kids. And they all sat according to their birthright. Reuven was born first, he was first. Binyamin was born last, he sat last, just like in the Choshen, in the Kohen's breastplate. It was in, in the chronological order. And he said, Yaakov Avinu, he was Bechir Shabbat, he said, Isfu, gather, and I will tell you what's going to happen to you at the end of days. He was about to reveal to them. What's going to happen in our generation? Bezrat Hashem, Mashiach is going to come. Pete Om. The Nivuah was silent. His connection to Hashem, this, he got disconnected. It went from LTE to Wi Fi, from Wi Fi to nothing. He thought, Chas Shalom, that one of the guys over here, one of the Shvatim, they were not close to Hashem. He got very scared. All the brothers said together, this is the first time this sentence was uttered in Jewish history. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Had. The brothers said this, not Yaakov. We, we are one and we believe in Hashem who is one. And Yaakov Avinu answered back, what? Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed. What's the difference? Shema Yisrael has 25 letters. Baruch Shem Gavriel has only 24 letters. Yaakov Avinu said there's still something missing between all you guys. What's that? There's no unity. There's no unity between all 12 of you. And he starts blessing. He loses his connection, so he starts to bless every single one of them. And Rabotai, I'm about to reveal you a secret that you've never heard before. He starts with Reuben, the older brother. What mistake Reuben did, Bechor? All he did was take his father's bed. True. Mitzvat kibuda va'em, a son, or even a, a son, daughter, doesn't matter, cannot sleep on his parents' bed, cannot touch his parents' bed. Your parents' bed should be for you, oil moed. It should be like your, like your bet hamigdash. You can't touch it. You shouldn't go even to your parents' room. Lefi alacha. Your parents' room is sacrosanct. You now let it go there. Okay, Reuven was fighting for whose honor? His, mother. his mother's honor. He took his father's bed. He put it into his mother's room. How much he lost? He lost the firstborn. <laughs> he was firstborn. He lost that. He lost to be the king. And he lost the priesthood. Everything. Could you imagine how blue in the face he was getting as his father was telling him before he died, Reuben, you're like water. You know no boundaries. Water doesn't have a boundary. It goes wherever it has room. You're too fast. You're impatient, Reuben. Reuben, you're impatient. (coughs) Because you went on my bed, you lost everything. Wow. I know one thing in Chinuch, my Rebbe taught me in Chinuch, you don't give Chinuch, you don't give rebuke to your kids in front of the other kids. You should know that. It should be a golden rule to you in your life. Don't ever put your children down in front of the other kids. The children lose all respect for their parents like that. The embarrassment overrules the rebuke. Could you imagine, Reuven was a tzaddik, yes, admit. 
And I'm going to tell you something. Not only did Reuven not get embarrassed that day, he accepted that with love. And I'm going to tell you why soon. That, that gave him the greatest opportunity, the greatest gift. All the Kabbalah, all the secrets of the Torah came because of Reuben. I'm going to explain to you soon. Then he goes to Shimon and Levi. He says, Shimon and Levi, you guys are buddies. Two brothers. Arur Apam, may your anger be cursed. The Midrash says when, when Yosef said to Shimon and, when the, and Yosef said to the older brothers, I am Yosef, the first two people to have their hearts come out was Shimon and Levi. Arur apam, may your, may your anger be cursed. Anger is a result of ego. When, Ruben, when Shimon and Levi heard that their sister Dina was raped by Shechem, they didn't have time to think. Right away, they came up with the idea. It was their idea to give all of the city of Shechem a Brit Milah. And on the third day, they killed 24,000 people. We did the math in our class. That's 500 people an hour for each brother. In one day, they wiped out a city of 24,000 people. Wow. It's two brothers. Each one had to kill 500 people. There was no guns back then. 500 people an hour. I don't know if that's even possible. You may need to stick a sword into 500 people an hour. That's crazy. Super ninjas. So, so much blood. And you know what? The last two people they killed was Shechem and Chamor. And the Torah says they killed them the Ficharev. What's the Ficharev? They stuck by the tip of the sword. You know the tip? It hurts the most. They stuck it in th to show you that by the end of the day, they still had a power to go another day. That was, that was Shimon and Levi. He comes to them, you, you, Yaakov, he looks at them and he says, Arur Apam! Cursed is your anger. You know what made you do that? Yaakov looks at them and he says, you know, you guys, your anger almost killed me. Could you imagine their faces? Right, be and know what he tells them? Kibirtsonam ikrushor. In your will, you are about to kill an ox. He was hinting to them, guys. I never gave you guys rebuke, but I know it was your idea to kill Yosef. Yosef is ox. is represented by an ox. Wow! They must have died and came back to life at that moment. Because the Torah doesn't tell us the whole story. The Torah tells us the story that we need to know. The Midrash, it gives us the, you know, it fills the blanks. You know? Could you imagine what Shimon and Levi were feeling at that moment? And then he, was, he went to Yehuda. Yehuda was exploding. The Midrash says Yehuda was already backing out of the door. From embarrassment. Why? Forget about selling Yosef. He was with his daughter-in-law. Yaakov said, come here. Don't run away. Sit, my son. He says, Yehuda, sit down next to me. He says, Yehuda, Yeducha Achicha. You're my Jonah. Yehuda is himself turning blue. Why? He doesn't understand why he deserves so much praise. He gives him so much praise. He says, you, you will be the king. You will be the Talmud Chacham. He says, you Yehuda, you're going to have students. Oh, Rabbi Yehuda Anasi is going to come from you. He says, you Hillel Anasi is going to be your grandson. Yehuda, I love you. Rashi says, wait a second. Why was Yehuda, why, this is a message to parents. Why was Yehuda blessed with so much he says, he says you, you will soak your clothes in wine. Your teeth will be full of, of milk. You're going to be rich. You're going to be David Melech. Rashi says, you know why he deserved all of that? He had one trait that the brothers didn't have. He admitted his mistake. Rashi says, wait a second. Hold your horses. Reuben admitted his mistake too. So did Reuben. 
Reuven re- admitted his mistake. It says Reuven ripped his clothes and he said, My brother Yosef, he wanted to take him out of the pit. The, the Torah says it's the, it's the first time in Jewish history. The uh, Torah testifies that what was going in a person's brain. Reuven! Reuven! What happens? No, Yehuda, says Yaakov. Rashi asks the question, and Rashi answers the question. Rashi says, you know why Reuben admitted his mistake? It was only once he saw Yehuda admitted his mistake. Mm -hmm. He says, it takes a man with guts. It takes a man with koach to admit his mistake. And that's the message we should have for our kids. In our generation, where we have, next to my kolo, where I learn, there is a, a small store where they give out drugs. You come with a, what's it called? Dispensary, Dispensary of marijuana, yeah. cannabis, and they say, they give a card. Anyone who comes with a card, with a fake, you know, prescription, you come, you get your garbage. Your the drug that keeps you into yourself, you know. If Hashem wanted you to stay inside yourself, He would have left you in your mother's womb, you know. That He wants you to come out. He doesn't want you to stay inside, you know. And our generation, where I have in my class children who says it's not a problem, I go to college. And I go inside the bathroom, kids are smoking oil over there. Now they have a new thing. They separated the mellow part with the high part. They made it into an oil. The kids take that and they enjoy in the bathroom. It's almost odorless. Yeah, vaping. Yehuda said, I admit my mistake. What mistake did you make, Yehuda John? From you came out two tzaddikim, parrots and zelak. If it wasn't for that mistake, Yehuda, you wouldn't have David Melech. You know what was Yehuda's plus? He caused his brother to admit his mistake. When you're an example for other people, they say, Baruch Shezei Yalad, Baruch Shezei Gidel. Blessed is the person who raised this kid. Blessed is the person who had this kid. Yehuda was a king that not only admitted his mistake, but caused other people to change. That's the difference between a king, between a leader and a follower. Yehuda messed up more than all the other brothers. It was the Isur Erva. It was, a, it was a prohibition of the highest level. But he said, you know, we have a famous saying on Yom Kippur. One who tries to hide his averot in his pocket over here, you know, he's not going to be successful. You admit and you stop, Yerucham, you get a pardon. You get pardon. You don't get, you don't get a, you know, you don't get your t- your sentence commuted. You get it pardoned, like it never happened. But there is an even bigger chidush in our parsha, and I'm gonna tell you something that, for sure, you know, if you heard this before, you know, kol kavod. But when I read this today. I was shocked, shocked. The beauty of our Torah. Yehu- uh, Yaakov, let's go back to Shimon and Levi. He curses their anger. Look at Rashi. You have to learn Torah with Rashi. Rashi says, what was his curse? Yaakov's rebuke to Shimon and Levi. He says, because you guys are angry folk. You guys are guys who can't control your anger. I bless you guys that you will be teachers of children. 
You'll be teachers of children because then you're going to have to find your parnasa. You'll never be home. Six days a week, you're going to be traveling around. You'll be separated because your power is always together. So therefore, I'm separating you guys. And this is the beautiful point in the Torah. Sometimes segregation is unification. Sometimes not talking to somebody. Sometimes not being friendly with somebody actually causes in a macro level to, for you guys to be unified. Now I want to ask you guys a question. If a person has an anger issue, what's the last thing he should be doing? Teaching. Teaching children! What does Yaakov say? Yaakov Avinu. You guys, your anger is cursed. You sold. You wanted to kill Yosef. You killed 500 men an hour in Shechem. Till it came to 24,000. You have an anger issue, guys. So what's your, what's your curse? What's your rebuke? You're going to be teachers of children. You want to kill all the children of the Jewish people? What do you, what's wrong with you? You ever see an angry parent? I've, 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 heard, I've heard them upstairs, you know. They could yell. You know, they could yell through sheet rock. I'm sure it's through concrete too. But they can't be, they, they can be parents, but they cannot be teachers. Why did Yaakov rebuke Shimon and Levi to be teachers of children? They have an anger issue. Ah, Rabbi Isai. This is where the Rambam comes in. Every bad attribute has a golden path. It's called it the Shvila Zav. Even in anger, there is a good and a bad. Yaakov Avinus looks at them and he said, Guys, I'm not rebuking you, I'm blessing you. You think it's a rebuke, but a parent never ever puts his child down when he loves them. Never! Whatever he does is always for the good. He looks at them and he says, You guys have an anger issue. The Gemara says in Masechet Yoma, that when the Kohanim would see the Kohen Gadol make a mistake on Yom Kippur, on Yom Kippur, in the Avodat Beit HaMikdash, they would want to kill him on Yom Kippur. They had such jal inside of them. The Gemara says in Masachat Kiddushin Daf Ayin, how do you know if a person is miyuchas? He has good lineage. If he doesn't fight. When somebody makes fun of him, he's, how you say? What's the best show in town? Gung show. He's quiet. He's quiet. Except for Kohanim. When Kohanim have Jal, it's okay. They have an issue. How you say? They have an issue. They, they like, they are too hot headed. If they get upset, it's okay. Pardon them. Sometimes you need to be a little angry with your students. You cannot always be lovey dovey. Mm hmm. You have kids. You can't always say, come, Jonam, you want to watch? You want to watch your... I Today, it's the generation of the iPads. You want to watch your iPad? You want a present? You want a this? You want a that? You want your toy? You want to, to eat beastly for breakfast? Come, Jonam, come, come. No. The Gemara says, Yaakov Avinu was blessing his two sons. Because your anger, don't use it to kill people. Don't go into any, to gangs. You know, we don't need, you know, Bukharians versus the Spanish versus the this, the that. You know, you can relax. When do you have to use your anger for the good? Sometimes a little, how do you say, uh, strictness in Russian. In Russian, strictness. Strogi. So you have to be a little strict strogi. Yes. I sound like I just made a pizza. You know, you gotta be a little strict. Because if you give your kids all the love, mm -hmm. no respect. they're gonna spit in your face in the future. And who's the best person who can give that strictness to their kids? Shimon and Levi. To go fight in your work, to make... To fight with your boss and to fight with your employees, your work. No, don't fight with adults. But but trickle in that 
strictness to your children. Mm-hmm. You know, I personally, as a, I wouldn't call myself a machanich. I'm too soft-hearted to be a machanich. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a class. And um, in my class, sometimes the kids abuse me. Like, they'll actually, like, jump on me. And I always come home and I say to myself, like, how do I get these kids in their seats? Like, I want to, like, I want to make them learn. And they learn, but I want to make them, I want to make them tamidah chachamim. But then I go to the next class, and I look at them over there, and they're all like soldiers over there. And it's all the, the toughest kids. And I said to the teacher, what's your secret? He said, vitamin S. I never heard of that one. For the Flintstone vitamin? It's some kind of new... It's called vitamin slap. When they open their mouth and they're not supposed to open, a little pick in the face don't, doesn't do any harm. I said, quite a couple. I don't know. My hand just doesn't go up. It's like I don't have a battery in my hands. It just stays down all the time. I said, call a kavod, and now I remember this dracha. And I said, Shimon Velevi. These guys, I'm not going to say banzitim, because they're, I won't even reach the dirt that's under their feet. They're the shvatim, Shimon Velevi. But you know what? Their anger can be used for good. Arur apam, your anger is cursed. But use it where it works. When you're raising children, our generation, unfortunately, is a generation of love. It's a generation of the ego. Let's feed our kids self-esteem. Just feed it more, 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 more. They don't have enough self-esteem. Feed their ego. Feed it. Make them more. Make them... What happens at the end of the day? They'll give you a shata in the face. You have to learn how to mix chesed with gvura. And you know what? This is not a new idea. I'm not making this stuff up. It's a gemara in Masech brachot Small doche, yamin mekarev. Slap him with your left hand, hug him with your right hand. Why does it work with children and not with adults? Because children choose to be happy over being right. So when you get them at the state when their whole world revolves on Abba and Ima, you get them for the rest of their life. But when you try to work on them when they're teenagers, you lost them for the rest of their life. And I know kids, children, tzaddikim, tzaddikim with good hearts. But if they have a hunger, you know, a hunger, for them, it's not an issue to go into a store, get some bacon with cheese. Mm. Don't forget to say. It's not an issue for them to go over the Torah. Why? When they were younger, they didn't have that strictness. That's why I said in the beginning of our lecture, Unfortunately, the kids go, they speak, you know, they don't, they speak because they speak, you know, they're children, they have no dot, they have no knowledge, they cannot discern between right and wrong, they say stuff, parents get in trouble, that's not an excuse not to give your kids chinuch, in front of all the 12 shvatim, Yaakov gave Reuven, Shimon and Levi chinuch, you're embarrassing your kids in front of everyone else, they're turning blue in front of you, no, because they can handle it. If you could change your father's bed, you could handle getting a little shate in front of the other kids. If you could kill 500 people an hour, you could get a shate in front of the other kids. But when he got to Yosef, what did he tell Yosef? What did he tell Yosef? He says, Ben Porat Yosef. Ben Porat Ale'ain, Jonam. I know you're very sensitive, boy. You know, relax, I love you. Well, who was the first person to kiss Yaakov after he died? Yosef. Not because he didn't see his father. You know, Yosef was 17 years with his father. The Torah says he barely saw him. He was a king of Egypt. He didn't get time for his father. He was dealing with bureaucracy. He was a king. 
When his father died, he started to cry in his father's face. He was so sensitive. Yosef was a sensitive man. Yosef Tzadik was a sensitive person. Yehuda was sensitive. So Yaakov said, come my sensitive boy, come. Don't run away. Yaakov was the greatest mechanech. He was the greatest raiser of children. He knew who to give a slap in front of everyone and who to give a hug in front of everyone. You're a parrot. People who aren't parents, when they will be parents. If you think our generation is a generation of the iPhone, iPhone, iPad, I, everything is I, 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 I. If you, then in the game, you're going to say, I, you know, if you're going to think that you're going to be on your phone, you know, I have a little girl at home. She's a one and a half. She says sentences already. Very advanced child. Over a day, a day, she already started asking for the iPad. I told my wife, now is the time to put her in her re into rehab. Not later, now. I said, now it's the time to implement. My son, I didn't have this issue. I said, now we got to implement a rule in the house. From the time we come home, 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock, all technology is in the shkaf. Everything is in the shkaf. They will cry for three hours. You have to learn how to close your ears. And it's hard to do, especially with women. It's very hard for them to handle all the balagan. But you as the husband inside the house, you have to put your foot down. So this is the time to change it. You know, some kids cannot handle it. You know, they need that. They need to be in remission. You can't give them this technology. How do you know children don't have that? They could see the same video 30 times in a row. 30 times. You're not sick of seeing the same thing. You know why? They have no dot. Since they have no dot, you implement the dot inside of them. You do it. If you're not going to do it, you're going to... I told my wife, I said, I said to her, this 10 minutes on the iPhone right now is going to cost us dearly in the future. Let's put it away. You know, let's put this thing away. That's what we do. When we come home, we put... It was a rack. When we come home, we put all of our iPhone stuff inside that. We close the rack. No more technology. Told they go to sleep. No technology. It ruins the kids. Now, if I'm a selfish parent, what would I say? I need my, you know, I came from work. My nisarchor, dardisar. What do I need all this yelling for? Bas, you know? I come home, you know, I teach kids during the day. Do you know how much ringing is in my ears when I come home? Lots of ringing, besides for my phone ringing all the time, you know, I come home, I want to rest. And I say to myself, I bought my son two dinosaurs. He loves dinosaurs. All kids love dinosaurs. I said to him, you want your dinosaur? I open up the book. I said, you're going to earn your dinosaur. He's three years old. Teach your kid. He has to earn what he has. I open up this. Says, what letter is this? His lame. I said, look at it again. Aleph. Okay, good. Five questions, right? You get your dinosaur. Next question. What's this letter? Hey, look at it again. Gimel, good. Next one. I open up a book of Tzadikim. says, who's this rabbi right here? He says, looks at me. He says, you know who this is? Aravadia, very nice. Next, who's this one? Avshimon Agassi. Who's this? Ben Ishai. Who's this? We're too, we know, we're lazy. We don't want to, we don't want to put into our children. We don't want to, you know, Gemara says, smack him with your left. Give him your right hands. Give it to him. Give him your right hand. How? How could the child implement in his life an oxymoron, a Pandora box? The Gemara says, Tupoi, open up your head. They could implement it. That's the way I created them. The way you treat them when, you're, when they're kids is going to, it's going to, you're going to help them when, you, when they raise up to handle marriage, to handle life, to handle not answering back. I told the kids in my, in my class today, I had a good class today. Ben Porat Yosef, Ben Porat I know the kids were sitting in my class and them, boys. I said, you know, I've been married for six years. I take the trash out. It's my thing. My wife doesn't tell me. I take the trash out. 
One boy looks at me and says, Rabbi, when you're going to be married 20 years, let me hear you say that. I look at him and say, boy, listen to me very carefully. If I'm married 100 years, I'm still going to take the trash out. Because I didn't go to a lecture and I heard a rabbi who said, you got to take the trash out. I know that when I work on my attributes, I change my whole house. The, f the house goes after the father, not the mother. Mother is fire. Father is water. What grows things? Water. water. Not fire. Not fire. Fire is warm. It feels good, right? You, people, the, the, there's a very old thing. When you look at a candle burning, if you look at it, you could reach deep levels of meditation. When you look at fire, when, I, when you look at a candle glowing, you could reach deep levels of meditation. It feels good. Jonam. You're water. You're a man. Lead the house. Lead the house. Change the house. Send this message to parents, guys. They need to know that this next generation is a very crucial generation. My parents' generation were the first ones to become religious. You know, in the, in the late 80s. The 90s was cooking, you know. Yeshiva here, mikvah there. This generation, 2018, 2019. This is the generation that's going to make the Bukharian people. Let's make a change. Don't tell your, yourself, oh, he's going to do it. Guys, the commissioner of education, Yemach Shema V'Zichra, Lo Alinu Lo Alam Yisrael. She wants to implement... There should be seven hours of secular education in middle school kids. The seven, eighth grade. All it took was 50,000 signatures to change her mind from seven hours to three and a half hours. Another 50,000 signatures will get her to zero hours. The Jews are greatest when they're united. If we're not united, we're not going to succeed. I was surprised when all I saw was 50,000 signatures. I would think it would be 10, 10, 100,000 signatures. I will tell you, don't be lazy. Hashem gave our generation a gift. It's a curse at the same time. It's also a gift. It's called technology. Use it for your benefit. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen.